how's it going? Welcome to week 23. <laughs> and this is my first jar of homemade tomato jam. So I'm really pumped about this. I made this today. Um, and it tastes pretty good. I have yet to water bath can it. That's the next step. Um, but I'm very pleased with how this turned out. Now, I've had a rough Monday. So I wanted to take you guys in the garden, show you what needs to be done because we finally don't have rain in the forecast. <laughs> Thank God the rain has been insane. I mean, the plants are very happy, but the rain's been totally nuts. So let's, let's talk about what needs to happen in the garden. I've barely been out here over the last week because it just wouldn't stop raining. Tomatoes. <laughs> they look fine, right? And then you realize that this branch over here actually belongs over there. But look at that tomato. That thing's massive. Hopefully, um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do about this little issue. But I'm going to do something <laughs> because it's, it's a rough, it's a rough life. I need to cut off some of these like diseased leaves. This is just what happens when tomato plants get too wet for too long. And even, I think I'm going to go ahead and rip out these marigolds. These were, these were a good idea, but with how much rain we had, which nobody could have known how much freaking rain we were going to have, um, it led to stuff like this. Um, and there's a ripe San Marzano in there. I just can't get to my plants as much as I would like to. So the marigolds are going to be coming down, um, which is fine because it just, like I said, it leads to stuff like this. Like this plant is perfectly healthy, but it's just, you know, it's got blight, which is preventable. Um, however, my plants are looking good. Like these San Marzanos are beautiful. Some of my Roma tomatoes down here are starting to ripen and look really nice. So, massive plant management is what is on deck for the tomatoes. Cucumbers are very happy, um, and I'm very happy with how they are looking. So, we've got a couple of cukes that are big. There's one in there, and then I mean, these plants are finally taking off. We should have had cucumbers probably a couple of weeks ago. However, um, our Great Dane kept eating my transplants. <laughs> so that's why we're getting cucumbers a little bit late in the season, but that's okay. It's been cool enough to where they've been okay. Um, however, we're now gonna start hitting over 90 degrees really consistently. So I'm hoping that the cucumbers can hang on. They don't really love the cold weather, or I'm sorry, the super hot weather. <laughs> They don't really love the super hot weather. They like kind of like that warmish, but before it gets like Hades, that's kind of where they're happy. So we will see. However, my dreams of a leafy green arch are definitely on the horizon. Um, and these cucumbers look just great. They look really healthy. So this is a happy time. I just wish they were producing more because also with the rain, there's been a lack of bees. So there was bees here a few times, but with just how much it's been raining, they just haven't been out and about. So hoping that now that the rain is subsiding, we're gonna start having more bees, which means more cucumbers in a smaller amount of time. I have to figure out what to do about these tomatoes because um, they are just... <sighs> I've been really avoiding what I think I need to do to them which I think what I need to do to them is I think I need to top them, which hurts my heart. But here's the logic behind topping your tomatoes. So I think I've explained this a couple of times in vlogs, but when it hits over 90 degrees, which our forecast for the next 14 days is consistently over 90 degrees, your tomato blossoms will fall off the plant. They will not pollinate, they won't do anything. Therefore, your plants will stop producing fruit. So here's my diatribe about summer gardening in the South, okay? 
low maintenance plants are your friend. Tomatoes are not low maintenance plants the way that I like to grow them. They are actually very high maintenance plants. They require a lot of pruning, they require a lot of trellising. Tomato, homegrown tomatoes, irreplaceable things, but summer gardening when it's so hot and nasty and sticky outside, I stick to melons, very low maintenance. I'm gonna do sweet potatoes this year. You can get tomatoes to carry over into the fall. You can, it can happen. However, however, that means, and it's a very small harvest that you're gonna get in the fall. So you have to maintain your tomato plants all throughout those hot months, July, August, and September. You are, I don't, I don't want to like kill myself for a small harvest of tomatoes when I've had them all summer. So all of this to say, I'm going to be topping these plants. They're literally so heavy that they can't even stand up straight anymore and they're not gonna be producing fruit. So I would just be, in my opinion, wasting resources on them for the next two months. I would be wasting water, my time, and those are two very important resources, especially my time. So that's why, that's why I'm doing this. And honestly, I'm probably gonna pull the plants out of the ground completely in more than likely I will be pulling them all out of the ground I would say in like late July it's just too hot to function um and yeah I tend to I like to take gardening breaks in February which is our coldest month and August which is our hottest month so that was a lot of talking probably gonna have to edit a lot of that but it's okay so we're going to chop the heads off of some of these it's a graphic I'm gonna take one last glorious vision of how beautiful this is the deed is done look at that look at all that breathing room down there and there honestly are some massive fruits that are gonna ripen but this is uh it's the beginning of the end. The end for the tomatoes. There's still plenty of tomatoes to be had. Don't don't get it twisted. But they just all good things come to an end. And uh, this is the beginning of the end of this tomato season. So it's okay. Now it just starts the process of like preserving and canning and doing all that good stuff. But um, it's nice to be able to like see my plants again. <laughs> And, you know, maybe someday I will have, like, 10-foot-tall cattle panel trellises and I can grow my tomatoes to the freaking heavens, but that is, uh, that's not the current reality. Hey guys, how is it going today? I am... I'm... I, I'm not gonna lie, I had a real shit day. <laughs> but that's okay, because we're out in the garden. Um, and it looks like I, I honestly, I came out here earlier, um, and I went right back inside because there was a big, angry, aggressive looking wasp. It was a big black wasp and oops, I just put this whole plant out of the ground cause a cucumber beetle flew at me. Okay, well now that I, now that I just pulled this whole freaking plant out of the ground, might as well give the dogs a green bean snack can I have some can I have some sits what if everybody did a sit oh those are good sits here's one okay that was really aggressive if we love boons love them so much um, anyways so there's this really large bug out here earlier it was big and it was black it was so big I actually, for a while, sorry, I'm really jumpy now because this damn bug was out here earlier. Um, this bug, it was so big, I legit thought it was a hummingbird. I was like, oh, look at the hummingbird flying around. It was not a hummingbird. Can confirm. Um, after I looked at it, it landed on something and I looked at it and I was like, that is the biggest bug I've 
I think I've ever seen. And so I did a little bit of research. It's called a tarantula hawk. A tarantula hawk. Ew. It's a type of wasp that is so big. It is like the biggest species of wasp. It's so big that it stings tarantulas and takes them into their little hole and lays eggs in them and then the eggs eat the things from the inside out. It's really gross. It's really gross, guys. I'm, I'm so not a bug person. Like I can't, I actually can't express to you how much of a, how, how much of a bug person I am not. Um, so I saw that and I thought to myself, well, you know what, not today, Satan. And I went back inside, but I'm back out now that it's a little bit darker. I really, really need to plant some of these melons. These are the melons we sewed together and their little roots are sticking out of the bottom, which means they gotta go in the ground. So this is a Kajari melon. I think I'm gonna plant this in the backyard. These are, oh, these are all Kajari melons. So it looks like I'm planting a lot of Kajari melons um, in this, uh, this little place where I've got all the other stuff. And then I also need to water. So this time of year where we're at in Texas, you really have to be careful about when you water because if you water when it's too hot, um, you could actually like really damage the root systems of your plants um, to the point where like in the months of like August when it's regularly over 100 degrees, if you water when it's over 100 degrees, you will hurt your plant and more of your water will evaporate than actually gets into the roots. So we're gonna plant these guys and go from there. Also, I planted those jackby little pumpkins and some of the blue pumpkins and um, guess what I didn't do? Three guesses. Didn't label them. Ugh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So we're gonna plant a bunch of Kajari melons and I'm actually just gonna let them vine in here in this bed. I'm not actually gonna trellis them up anything. Um, you can trellis them up, up a trellis um, because they are personal sized melons. You just have to give them a little support. I did that last year with sugar baby watermelons. Um, it was fun making them little hammocks, but that's not what I'll be doing with these Kajari melons. So I'm gonna go get these in the ground. Um, Lana. Hey, 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 don't eat my sunflowers. What, what is wrong with you? Are you kidding me? Oh, you jerk. <sighs> Why did you eat my sunflowers? Did it, did it taste good for you? <laughs> Why'd you do that, girl? This is why Lana really has to be supervised in the garden because she likes to eat stuff. I caught her chewing on some of my tomato plant leaves earlier. Gory. Yeah, whatever, you're cute. And then there's the garden saint. The garden saint boy, huh? Hey boy. I'm glad I actually caught that on camera. Okay, y'all, we have reached peak nasty, nasty season here in, uh, in Central Texas. It's consistently over 90 degrees. The mosquitoes are so bad that um, like DEET is not even working anymore. And so we're gonna get it in and out of here really quickly. <laughs> but some of these plants, I just wanted to show you what kind of damage can happen when you've got plants that um, have a really hard time with the humidity. Um, these peppers just are suffering and like that's the only way I can describe it. And a lot of the peppers are. There's some that look okay, but some look just really rough. Just the, the onslaught of rain we had. We had rain every day 
for 30 days and that just doesn't happen here and so um, as big and beautiful as all of my peppers look um, a lot of them are just really struggling. So I don't know how much harvest I'm actually gonna get out of these. And there's some plants that I probably just need to like go ahead and pull. Um, but we are gonna harvest some stuff. There, I know that there's peppers in here that need to be harvested. So that is what we're gonna do. But I am a tad bit sad of the way that the plot has turned out this year. This plot, I didn't have my backyard garden last year. I just had the plot. The plot was beautiful. It was so gorgeous and lush and the tomatoes were beautiful. And this year the tomatoes got curly top virus and then all the rain. And so some years are just better than others. And I guess my encouragement to you is to just accept that life is evolving and that life changes and that some years are gonna be better than others. And that doesn't mean you're a good or bad gardener. That just means that there's forces outside of your control. <laughs> okay, so I didn't think there was that much to harvest. Um, and then I started getting bell peppers like this. Um, so I have a basket that's like literally almost full um, of all peppers. So we're gonna have to figure out what to do about that. I think I will probably make some pepper jelly for my grandma. She loves pepper jelly and I'm gonna get to see her this weekend. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have to figure out what to do with all of that. So apparently, I'm wondering now, these peppers like now are so prolific and I think what I'm finding is the more you pick peppers, the more the peppers produce, which if you think about like the science of a plant, it makes sense because the plant wants to reproduce which means it has to produce a fruit because the fruit contains the seed so i'm wondering maybe if we just get a break from the humidity here um or at least it just doesn't rain <laughs> that the plants can kind of get dried out and not have so much like what's clearly like mildew damage um but my plot one of my plot neighbors came and she actually gave me a few crook neck squash which i'm excited about because i was really excited to grow squash this year and then the squash vine borers just murdered all of them so yeah i'm not real sure um what i'm gonna do with all of this this was unexpected <laughs> but i mean y'all there's just a lot of power in the fact that I told myself it was going to be the year of the pepper. And then I got this. And this is probably my third massive harvest of peppers. Feeling good. Feeling good. I think at the end of the season, I'm going to do a couple of videos on my process for both tomatoes and peppers because they've both just been really successful this year. So I'm going to head home. <laughs> And I think I'm gonna go ahead and make some pepper jelly in a separate video. Um, but today is, today's Wednesday. So we'll be wrapping up this video tomorrow. Um, so I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning guys. Wanted to show you the real real of uh, morning harvesting at the house. Um, I desperately need to shower. Um, but we have a cucumber to pick. So there's one. Now cucumbers have these like sharp little things on them. So I always grab them with a towel. And there's our first cucumber of the year. Do you feel like cucumbers are one of those that like hides? So you have to like go all up in your plants looking for them. Like I noticed this one down here yesterday and I had no idea that it was down there. So there's another one. First cucumber harvest of the year. Now, my cucumbers, they got started really late because 
I think I've said this quite a few times, our Great Dane um, kept eating them, <laughs> eating the plants. Um, she doesn't eat that many plants, but when she does, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty dunzo. So she was eating the plants, and then we had that like crazy 30 days of rain, which was great for the plants. However, cucumbers are one of those plants that have to be pollinated um, by something. So the bees weren't out because it was raining so much. And so these plants literally just started getting pollinated like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Um, so that's why the cucumbers are a bit late this year. Um, I should already be drowning in cucumbers and I hope I at least get a few more. Cucumbers tend to not do super great once it's consistently over 90 degrees in my experience. Um, so we will see how that goes. Um, I also, when I've grown cucumbers in the past, they, it's been at my community plot, so I haven't actually been there to water them every day. So I'm thinking maybe if I'm there to water them frequently, they'll do a lot better, but I'm pretty, pretty pumped about these. These are straight eight. Um, some of these were all transplants that I bought, um, because mine got eaten. So pretty pumped about this. Um, cucumbers were my first, were my first thing that I grew where I tasted it and I was like, oh, that's what a cucumber tastes like. <laughs> so anyways, we are ending this vlog on a sleepy, on a sleepy harvest note, but pretty happy with these. It's been a good harvesting week. I think I'm going to put together some Garden Eats videos of me preserving peppers uh, and probably tomatoes. So be on the lookout for those. Thanks so much for joining me this week. Stay tuned for next week. It is not going to be a vlog. It's going to be a little bit of a different style of video because I will be in transition from one job to another, which is very exciting, but I'm going to need to be pretty focused on that. So I'm going to pre-record next week's video, which I don't normally do. Um, so stay tuned. I'm kind of excited. I've got an idea. We'll see how it goes, but thanks so much for watching and we will see you next week.